number 24 and this is a really nice one Genesis 1932 Let's get our father to drink wine and then sleep with him and preserve our family line through our father That night they got their father to drink wine and the older daughter went and slept with him The next day the older daughter said to the younger Last night I slept with my father Let's get him to drink wine again tonight and you go in and sleep with him So both of Lot's daughter became pregnant by the father while in 2 Peter 2 7 it says and if he rescued Lot a righteous man who was distressed by the depraved conduct of the lawless so Genesis describes Lot as an awful human being but Peter describes Lot as a righteous man so is he a righteous man or a man who gets drunk every night and sleeps with both of his daughters repeatedly until he gets his own daughters pregnant from him Which one is it? Do you still believe that these are words of God? A textual critic takes the ancient manuscripts of the Bible, the pieces of parchment that were found all over the world, and he has to learn uh, Hebrew, Greek, Aramaic, Latin, you know, these languages that these parchments have been found in. And he has to take these scriptures and try to find out where they came from, uh, why there are variations in the many different versions of the same parchment let's say you have Matthew chapter 1 from the Bible there might be 5,000 different variant readings of Matthew chapter 1 in six languages and so he has to be able to take all these and sift through them try to find out why there's so many variations of the readings and then determine which one is the original um, and that's not as easy a task as seeing you could figure you know which whenever the oldest is probably a more original which is not the case since there are no originals uh, you might have one parchment that is the oldest parchment of the of the of the group but it might be a copy of 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 a copy with with laden with mistakes if you read about noah in the bible there is the story about noah saving uh, uh humanity from the flood with an ark and all of that there is this in the bible there's other another aspect to the story of noah that, that not many people know about unless they actually take time to open a bible this will not be preached from any pulpit anywhere is that the, the bible says that noah was an alcoholic this is the Bible's portrayal of Noah, or Nuh salam, that he was an alcoholic, he was a drunkard. This is the word used in the Bible, that he was a man given to alcohol. And <clears throat> I'm a psychology major, and my, my, my uh, field of specialty is mental illnesses, and, and alcoholism is one of those, is, is a mental illness. And I know from seeing alcoholism's effect on one of my close uh, friend's parents, uh, I know that someone who is truly addicted to alcohol, and if Noah lived for so long addicted to alcohol, he was seriously addicted to alcohol, um, it is hard for someone addicted to alcohol to hold down a nine to five job working at McDonald's flipping hamburgers, much less construct an ark to save humanity from a flood that's never happened. So that stopped me for a moment in my tracks. And I said, no, as an alcoholic, you know, and, and it, it bothered me for a minute because I said, I, you know, things started popping in my mind like, if Noah was a drunkard, how did he know God was talking to him? Because, you know, I've seen some people, the alcoholics, you know, you were just asleep in my dog's food bowl the other night drooling and now you're telling me you were talking to God last night. You know, this, this, you know, to rationally that would not make sense to me. That's like, you know, an alcoholic on the street coming to you and tell you God's talking to him. You know, he has no, this would give this man no validity. This man has no validity with anyone. So, I didn't pay it too much attention. It caught me, but I said, you know what, I'm going to keep going because there's one thing that you don't do in Christianity and I'll tell you what it, what it is in a minute when I started doing it. Um, then I came across the story of Lot, or Lut alayhi salam. And we all know the story of Sodom and Gomorrah in, in these stories, but there's a, another very twisted story in the Bible about Lot and his daughters. There's a story of Lot and his daughters uh, uh, in, in, in the Bible that says his daughters got him drunk one night and seduced him and committed incest with him. This is, the Bible, this is one of the Bible portrayals of the prophets of God. And it says that David saw, uh, saw this woman named Bathsheba, and she was one of the most beautiful women of her time. Uh, and she happened to be married to one of the commanders of his army named Uriah. But David on this day decided that he was not able to resist his temptation uh, to be with this woman Bathsheba, so he did. Uh, and he committed adultery with her. And knowing that he did this, he, the, the, the way that he decided to cover it up was he sent a letter to the generals of his army saying that when the battle was fierce for everyone to pull back and abandon Uriah uh, so that he would be killed and when he dies then he could have Bathsheba, no harm, no foul. So. David went from being the slayer of Goliath, the hero for man, 
to uh, an adulterer, a, a, a plotter, and a murderer. And so this is when I really caught myself and said, hold on now. Something's wrong here. Something's got to give. I said, because to me, God's prophets in my mind were people of example, people who I could follow as an example, someone who was supposed to be the best of us so that we could follow them and emulate them. And I'm, they're turning out to be worse than some of the people that you see on America's Most Wanted. David is somebody that if I only knew this about him from the Bible, I see him coming down the street, I'm going the other way and calling 911 because he has to have a warrant out on him for something. This is what I'm thinking in my mind. This man is not an honorable man at all. He, okay, he killed Goliath, yeah, but he killed this other guy named Uriah to be able to commit adultery with his wife. So I, 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 did, I committed the cardinal sin in Christianity. I started asking questions. Um, this is the one thing you do not do in Christianity is you don't ask questions, especially not about issues like this. Um, so I went to my pastor and I started asking questions. You know, what, what, what's going on here? You know, pastor, there's, there's a, a very bad recurring uh, habit about these men in the Bible. What is, what is the deal here? And I remember he told me the same thing that I, almost every pastor or every evangelist or anyone I talked to about this, same, same, same answer, almost like it was programmed. They would put their hand on my shoulder and say, Brother Joshua, don't let a little bit of knowledge wreck your faith because you're not justified by knowledge, you're justified by faith. Uh, and they would quote me verses like, lean not on understanding, you know, Paul's, we're justified by faith in Jesus Christ. You know, this is all, they would quote this whole line of thing to me like it was already pre-programmed, they, like they programmed in pastor school that people are going to ask you questions and here's the answer. Number 19, 2 Chronicles 18, 21 to 22. I will go and be a deceiving spirit in the mouth of his prophets, he said. You will succeed in enticing them, said the Lord. Go and do it. So now the Lord has put a deceiving spirit in the mouth of these prophets of yours. The Lord has decreed disaster for you. These two verses alone destroy the whole Bible. They clearly say that God put a deceiving spirit in the mouth of these prophets of yours. If this verse is true, then all the information we got from these prophets is false. And if the information we have from these prophets is true, then these verses are lies. Choose one. Do you still believe that these are words?